day viewers i welcome you again to another interesting day to look at an interesting topic we are still coming to you live from advent cable network nigeria so call your loved ones to join you as the lord takes us through let us pray eternal rock of ages we bless your name for how far you have led us lord the seed you have planted in the lives of your children through your word have already started germinating we, have been, we are receiving the testimonies to you be all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, may you win more souls unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Minister to every troubled soul. Minister to every troubled heart this moment. And at the end, Jehovah, all glory will be ascribed to your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Viewers, I welcome you once again to another interesting day. Like I said earlier, um, the topic we'll be looking at today says the promise of internal life. The promise of internal life. Let's quickly look at John chapter 3, verse 16. It's a popular verse in the Bible. This one, you can quote it even without looking at the Bible. John 3, 16. I read, For God so loved the world that he gave his, own, his one and only son, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let us all look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. It says, When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Finally, let us also look at First John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. And this is the testimony God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Eternal life. What is eternal life, if I may ask? Eternal life is being one with God in eternity. Dwelling with him in heaven. Dwelling with Christ the Messiah. Being where he is. This eternal life, what it is? What is eternal life? Eternal life is a promise from God made possible through faith in Christ Jesus. It is the central theme of the Christian faith. It is our, every of our Christian struggle. We are hoping that it ends with our seeing Christ being in his presence singing with the sense triumphant, being with the 24 elders in heaven, bowing before him. That is our goal, our focal point on earth is to make heaven. You know, this internal life is a promise rooted in God's love for you and for I. Is a promise rooted in God's love to save the world, in God's love for humanity. 
God is the only source of internal life as recorded in John chapter 3 verse 16. We have read that place again, so no need of repeating it again, but it's a popular place of the Bible, it's a popular place in the scripture that we know very well. God loves the world. That was why he allowed his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, to die to save you and I. Remember, he said, who we go, who shall I send and who will go for us? And nobody was willing to undertake this great task. It was only his son that says, Here am I, Lord, send me. And he was sent. And he passed through the stages in life as a woman being. The old climax was dying. Being near on the cross of Calvary. Immediately he died. He was, immediately he was crucified. He died and was buried. And when he was buried, by Bible recorded on the third day, he rose again. What would be your excuse not to make heaven? What would be your excuse not to make this eternal life? What is it that you will say is hindering you now from surrendering to the grace of God to make this eternal life? He gave this eternal life to you and I as a gift, which we shall only receive through faith in Jesus Christ. Our hope is rooted in Christ, who is our eternal life. And we will appear with him in glory, according to Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. Brethren, we have assurances of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that God keeps his promise that Knowing that God keeps his promises as recorded in 1 John chapter 5 from verse 11 to 12. According to John 11 verse 25, which is our team for this week, which is where our team for this week was lifted. It says, Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus is the life. Jesus is the alpha Jesus is the Omega. Jesus is the impossibility specialist. With Jesus, with God, all things are possible. What is that thing that will make you not to make heaven? What is that thing that will hinder you from not making heaven? You know, in this ember month, in this month of October, we've entered the ember month. A lot of people will be cutting corners. A lot of things will be happening around you to make people, if I will be looking at, ah, this person is, go, is growing more than me. This one is doing well more than me. This one, how will I survive this ember month with the rising cost of things, with the inflation in the country, with how the economy is? You will now succumb to the pressures of this life and say, let me help myself. Instead of allowing God to help you in the situations that you find yourself Child of God, I want to equip you for one thing, which is for this internal life. In anything that you are passing through, in any situation that you find yourself, or whatever that is happening around you, no matter the pressure that people are mounting on you just to make you to succumb, just to make you to backslide, I want you to have this in your heart that eternal life is what matters at last. Remember the topic the promise of eternal life. God has already promised us this eternal life. So what will make you, what will be an excuse that will make you not to make this eternal life? What will be an excuse that will make you not to have this eternal life? What will be that reason that will make you not to be one with God in eternity? Is it the challenges of the world? Is it the strives of this world? Is it the suffering of this world? Is it the economic situation of this world? Bible recorded Lazarus as a poor man, as a pauper in the Bible. But he was in Abraham's bosom, even as a poor man. Why don't you die as a poor man? It's better for you to die as a poor man 
and make this eternal life and have this eternal life than having all the riches in the world. Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Child of God, I don't want you to suffer what the rich man suffered. The rich man said, let, but Father Abraham, let dip your finger in water. Whether we like it or not, there is eternal life. Whether we like it or not, there is heaven and there is hell. You are the one that have the decision to make now. You are the one that have the choice to make. You are the one that knows, ah, how will that how will I end this my life? Mind you, no, but you don't have not you do not have the guarantee of your life tomorrow. You do not have the guarantee of what will happen to your life in the next minute. Go and check the great men of this world that have died. The great men, they are full of life. If life, if life can be bought with money, you and I will not believe we are alive today. But the mercy of God, God Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, who is the source of life. Has kept, us, has kept us alive physically. Why don't we aspire? Why don't we strive to have this internal life? Brother, I want you to just say this short prayer before I continue. I don't know that thing you are struggling with. I don't know that particular sin you are struggling with. I don't know that thing that... I don't know that little fox that spoils the vine in your life. I don't know what that thing is. And when you remember, devil tries to use it to hold your life down. Why don't you submit it at the foot of the master? Why don't you say, God, I have no power of my own. And that's why I confess to you, allow the Holy Spirit of the living God to direct me. Allow God, Jesus, come afresh upon my life. See, there's no situation God cannot handle. There's nothing, no, no sin that God cannot forgive. There's nothing that you think you have done that God cannot let, forgive. You that is watching me, now, I hear the Lord telling me, you have been battling with incest that you, you slept with somebody related to you. And it has been one major issue. Whenever you remember, it's as if the devil is using it to hold you down. Why don't you let it go? Because you have submitted it at the feet of the master. Jesus said he has wiped away every of your sin. He has taken away every of your sorrow. You are a new creature now because you have found reason to live in Christ. So stop battling with that issue of incest. Yes, it happened, but mercy has found you. Mercy has located you. Therefore, what is that challenge again that will make you not to make a heaven? What is that challenge that will make you not to have eternal life? The Lord is laying it in my heart to minister to you also. You that killed somebody to be where you are. Now you are in your sick bed, and every day you are full of regrets. He is a merciful God. He's a merciful Father. Why don't you confess your sins to Him? If you cannot do it, ask anybody around you to get you a Bible believing pastor, to get you somebody from the Anglican fold to confess your sins, even you personally, where you are, even on that sick bed you are. Know that word is vanity upon vanity. Yes, you've killed to make money. Where is that money couldn't buy you life? I want you to humble yourself, submit yourself before the Lord. There is no situation you are in that the Lord cannot change. There is no sin the Lord cannot forgive. There is no transformation that his resurrection cannot give to you. There is nothing that you confess to him that will not be able just to forgive you of that sin. Son, daughter, Child of God, you that is hearing my voice that is watching me now, let go of the struggles of this world. You see, in this ember mode, pressures will come, temptations will come. People will want to try to bully you into doing what they are doing to make ends meet, to, so that you say, I have arrived. 
Just know that it is vanity upon vanity. Tell the Lord, I surrender to you. I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. I surrender all. Surrender all to him. Surrender all to him. Bible says that he is just to forgive you of every unrighteousness. Surrender that your shortcomings to him. Surrender that battle, that thing that you've been battling with. Surrender it to him. That your habit that you think you now cannot overcome. That sin that you think you cannot overcome. Every minute before 7 a.m. in the morning, you're already drunk. Why don't you surrender it to him? Every minute you are beating your wife, you are beating your husband. Why don't you surrender it to him? Every time you are having mood swing, why don't you surrender it to him? Every time your mouth is full of curse, may this happen to you, do this, this. Why don't you surrender your old self to him? You know, the promise of internal life is what we are looking at today. After building all your mansions, after building and driving all the exotic cars of this life, and your soul is lost, what will you tell your creator? What will you tell your master? And remember, money cannot buy internal life. Money cannot buy salvation. And let me tell you, child of God, there is nobody that says you cannot be in God and not be wealthy. You cannot be in God and you cannot drive those exotic cars. What we are saying is, why don't you marry in the Lord than marrying in the world? The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in him will never die. Eternal life is a present reality for believers. This is according to John chapter 10, verse 28. Eternal life is a gift from God, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. And also in reference to Titus chapter 3, verse 7. Eternal life is a future hope. Why don't you strive to be in that future home? Why don't you strive to be a partaker in the kingdom of God? Why don't you strive to say, God, I want to make heaven at last. Help me. I submit myself totally. I submit myself to your will. I submit myself. Transform me to be a new creature. And the Lord we come upon you afresh. Let us take this song into my life. Into my life. Call me to my life. Lord Jesus, call me to stay. Call me and stay. Call me to my life, Lord Jesus. Viewers, I want us to take these prayers. I want you to begin to thank God for the promise of eternal life. I want you to thank him from the depth of your heart. Tell him, Baba, we thank you for the promise of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. Pray that God will give you the grace to receive this gift and assurance of eternal life. 
Brethren, heaven is real. Hell is also real. Pray that God's grace will sustain you to run the race faithfully, so as to appear with him in glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father, for the souls that have surrendered to you. Lord, may you bring someone their way to continue to minister to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you all to join me in praying for these dioceses. We are bringing the Diocese of Lagos Mainland. We are bringing the Diocese of Obia and the Diocese of Niger West. I want you to pray, bow down your prayers and pray this prayer and say, God, remember these dioceses, remember the chief servants of this diocese, remember the clergymen that are serving in this diocese, remember also the laity that makes up the greater percentage of this diocese, Lord, that Baba, they you renew their strength like ego, that the clergymen that are working for you, that you shall renew their energy, that you shall renew their strength. That in any way that the devil has been using finance money to insult them, that Lord, may you provide their needs according to your riches and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any of the clergymen in these dioceses, the diocese of Lagos, Mainland, the diocese of Obia, the diocese of Obia, and the diocese of Niger West, that is still struggling with health, Lord. Baba, may you give that person a sound health. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I bring the chief servants of these dioceses, Right Reverend Akim Belu Johnson, Right Reverend James Oruori, and Right Reverend Johnson Ekwe before you, Lord. Your servants shall be alive in sound health to carry out the task you have committed in their hands. Father, as who have prayed with thanksgiving, so shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, the souls have been won to you. Jehovah, the devil cannot tamper with their souls. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, viewers. I thank you for staying tuned throughout this week. Don't let the wind of ember moon corrupt you. Don't let the wind of ember moon corrupt your newfound faith in Lord. Remain steadfast. Remain unshakable. The Lord is able to meet you at the point of your need. And he will not cross your foot to be moved. The Bible said that he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers or sleep. He will keep you. Keep watch over you. Keep watch over your household. That wedding that you are trusting the Lord for. Believe you me, it's going to happen any moment from now. That conception that you are believing God for is going to happen any moment from now. That job that you are trusting the Lord for is going to happen any moment from now. Just believe and it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for staying tuned to our midday prayer. Thank you for inviting your loved ones. The blessings of the invitations you've, you've sent out will locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. I see you carrying your child by this same time next year in the name of Jesus Christ. You are a child of favor and remain a child of favor till I come your time again. God bless you. Mm -hmm.